The Gospel says we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. And I know we've heard that phrase a million times. But it's important to look at what the neighbor is. What does neighbor mean? For the Jewish people of Jesus' time, the neighbor was another Jewish person living in the same neighborhood. So basically it was kind of limited to race, to religion, and your place. And then in the first reading, that word neighbor is mentioned once again. If you have your neighbor's cloak as part of a pledge, return it to him before nighttime, it says. So neighbor is an important thing that we should look at. Now, when I was reading this gospel, I was thinking of our neighbors when I was growing up on the northwest side of Chicago. We hated our neighbors with a passion. <laughs> they, they were a pain in the neck. Uh, they lived right next door. And when we would play baseball and the ball would go in their yard, you didn't dare go in the yard because they would keep that baseball. Uh, they used to frustrate my dad because he, uh, he had tires stacked up not my dad, the neighbors had tires stacked up in their yard and so water would get in there and mosquitoes were everywhere. Uh, their backyard looked like Sanford and Sons' backyard. It was really nasty. But that first reading tells us that we are called to love our neighbor. And that is an incredibly important uh, task for Jesus' time and also for our own. Let's look at that first reading. So it says, first of all, don't molest or oppress an alien. Aliens have left their homeland and are now strangers in a strange new land. Loving the stranger, the alien, is not easy. They're a little different. They speak a different language. They have some cultural customs that seem a bit strange. And then they cook food that's a little different than the food we normally eat. It's not easy to welcome the stranger, but it's clear from this reading that we are always called to welcome those who are strangers. The United States is a land of immigrants, a land of alien people, and yet we have a tense relationship with immigration. There was discrimination a hundred years ago when people were migrating from Europe, and there's a lot of discrimination now. And so immigrants have been a great blessing to our nation, but at the same time they get criticized, maligned and blamed for everything that goes wrong, whether that's in the media or in our own personal conversations. Some would say, close the borders, build walls, send everybody back home, get rid of the alien, the immigrant people. Well, this scripture tells us something different, that we value the person who is different from ourselves. We value them and we love them. God demands it of us. Don't wrong the widow or the orphan. The widow and the orphan have something in common. That is, they're without a family. They have lost their family. They're in a relationship crisis. And in Jesus' time, widows and orphans were among the poorest of the poor. They lost their family structure or anybody who could take care of them. And also, they really had no earning power in, in, the, uh, in the economic system of the time. They were always poor. And so we are called to be a family for those who would have no families. I think of foster families who are so generous with their homes, welcoming in uh, children that they have never seen before and some who have some problems. And there are so many people who open their homes and their hearts to so many folks. And we are called to do that very same thing based on this scripture. Our task really is to be a family for all people and not just our blood relatives welcoming everybody as they are and not as we would want them to be. Then it says you will have poor neighbors, those without a cloak, those without clothes. And we know even now there are so many in our society who don't have clothes, don't have a place to sleep, and we are called to do our best to help, to regard the needs of the poor as equal to our own. That's not easy sometimes. There was a person here in this parish who was telling me about a conversation that was had a number of years ago when the local parishes wanted to start a PADS shelter, which was a place for homeless people to stay overnight. And it was some very, very difficult conversation. My, my uh, home parish, St. Pascal's, on the northwest side of Chicago, their convent used to be filled many years ago, and now it's empty. Well, a couple of months ago, the pastor decided that 
he would open up the convent to a maximum of six uh, homeless mothers, and that way they would have a place to stay. You would have thought it was the end of the world. He told me, John, check out the um, check out the website. I can't remember the name of the website now. And read some of the convent uh, comments. Comment. Some of the comments that people had, and it was really disgusting. Some of the things they thought, you know, that six homeless women now would cause an incredible amount of. Uh, of crime in the neighborhood, you know, there would be horrible things going on. They thought they were a terror cell, you know, you name it. They accused them of everything. Well, there are so many people in our society who have, who have no place to go. So many people that don't have clothes on their back. People who have no cash and no access to services. And based upon this reading, God says, I will hear their clamor. I am compassionate. I will hear their cry. And so if we are made in God's image and likeness, then we are called to hear that cry of the poor. We are called to respond with compassion to those who are in need. And it's not very easy. It's not very popular. And also at the same time, we're not just giving people food for a day. I think that's the difficult part is we give somebody a box of food and say, well, I'm done. St. Augustine said many years ago, charity cannot replace justice which is denied. And so we always have to work for a just society. And it is important, certainly, to help people uh, for a day, but we also have to think in a longer term as well. So who is our neighbor? Is it the person who lives on either side of us? Certainly. Is it the person who exists in our neighborhood? Yes. Is it somebody who belongs to our religion? Yes, but it's so much more than that. We belong to a family of humanity. And sometimes we have to admit to the fact that those people who kind of make us uncomfortable, the alien, the poor, those who are struggling, they also are our neighbor and they are in need. And so this morning we pray for our neighbors. We also pray for ourselves, that we may respond well to the needs that they have. And we pray that the Lord will show us how to respond, to imitate his love and his compassion for all.